friends and welcome back to our 3ABN Sabbath School panel. My name is Pastor James Rafferty and we are finishing up the book of Genesis. We are in lesson number 11, Joseph the Master of Dreams. And we are going to be covering chapters 37 through 50. So a large chunk of Genesis is remaining and there's a lot for us to learn to glean in this last section of the book of Genesis. So I'm joined to my left by Pastor Ryan Day. Amen. Always a blessing to be here. And today we're talking about the attack on Joseph. All right. And Pastor Kenny Shelton, yeah. what do you got Again, today? Good to study the Word of God together. And we talk about Judah and Tamar. It, I just say fasten your seatbelt. It's, it's an <laughs> okay. exciting chapter. Okay. Right. <laughs> and Jill Morricone, glad you're with us today. Thank you, Pastor James. I have Genesis chapter 39, which is Joseph in Egypt. Okay. Mm. And then last, Pastor John Lombacain. Mm -hmm. uh, the dream of Pharaoh. You know, okay. everybody has a dream, including Pharaoh. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. So we've got some good stuff that we're going to be covering today. Before we get started, we want to ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us in prayer. So Pastor John, would you play, pray for us, please? Sure. Loving Father in heaven, we are always humbled when we open mm -hmm. the Bible mm -hmm. to recognize that it is a book we can never completely comprehend. But with your Spirit's guidance today, Father, reveal to us those things which we must share in the glory of your own character. Mm. Give us wisdom and understanding and may the end result be all the glory and honor go to you. Mm. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So our memory lesson this morning is found in Genesis chapter 37. We're gonna be covering chapters 37, 38, 39, and 40 in Genesis chapter 37, verse 19, which says, then they said to one another, mm. look, this dreamer is coming. This is Joseph's brothers mm -hmm. talking about Joseph, the dreamer of dreams. He's about 17 years old when his brothers are becoming acquainted with the fact that he's having these dreams and they're not happy about these dreams. So this story basically of Joseph is covering the last section of the book and it occupies more space than any other patriarchal character in the book of Genesis. Uh, although Joseph is just one of Jacob's sons, he is presented in Genesis kind of like a great patriarch, if you will, like, mm -hmm. like Isaac and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jacob. So we see here, too, that the life of Joseph highlights two important theological truths. First of all, that God fulfills his promises. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. God fulfills his promises. And second, that God can turn evil into good. Right, yeah. And we really need to understand that because there's so much evil in the world today and yet God can overrule it mm -hmm. with good. Yes. So in this week's study, we're going to focus on the early life of Joseph. He is Jacob's favorite son, not his first son. Reuben mm. was his first son, but he is Jacob's favorite son who is ironically nicknamed the dreamer, well. according to Genesis 37 <laughs> verse 19, mm -hmm. which means literally the master of dreams. Uh, that's the literal Greek meaning of the word, implying that he is an expert of dreams. And this title fits him really well because, as we find out, he not only receives and understands and interprets prophetic dreams, but he also fulfills them in his life. Mm -hmm. So he receives them, he interprets mm -hmm. them, and he is actually the fulfillment of many of these dreams. So in these chapters, we're going to see again that God's providence is affirmed, that what God predicts actually comes to pass despite the evil, despite the wickedness of the human heart. It reminds me of the book of Daniel in a sense. Yeah. You know, Daniel had these dreams and then he was part of the fulfillment of these dreams. And of course, the word we get from the book of Daniel is the interpretation is, is sure, the prophecy is sure yeah. and certain. And I love that about the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. The Word yeah. of God is sure and certain. It's something that we can really depend on in these last days. Okay, let's go to Sunday's lesson. Family Troubles is the title of Sunday's lesson. Jacob has at last settled in the land. And while Isaac was only a stranger, the text also says that Jacob dwelt in the land. Mm -hmm. And that's Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. Yet it was then, as he was settling into the land, that the troubles actually began. And these troubles were family troubles. Uh -oh. They weren't troubles from outside, as some of the previous chapters revealed. They were troubles from inside. Mm. The controversy doesn't concern the possession of the land, as it was in the past, but... Well, mainly the spiritual battles that are taking place within the family mm -hmm. dynamic and who doesn't relate well, to that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So let's start in Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Verse 2, these are the generations of Jacob, Joseph being 17 years Mercy. old. Let's just mm -hmm. stop there for a second. Do you remember when you mm -hmm. were 17 years old? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was 17. Yeah. 17 years old was a big deal. I mean, 16 driver's license. 17, you're moving into adulthood, right? Yeah, you're wow. almost 18. You're almost free, so to speak. Mm, well. 17 years old. So this is a time in Joseph's life when some f remarkable things are going to happen to him. He's going to experience some things. Mm. But, you know, when I was 17, I thought I knew a lot, mm. and I really didn't know that much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it might be, this might play into the story here a little bit right. with Joseph, right? He's still a young man. Yes. He's still a kid. Yeah. He's out feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad, okay, mm -hmm. the, the Bible says the <laughs> lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of uh, Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Uh -oh. So maybe he's a little bit too young to know better than to go snitching to the dad, right, so to speak. Well. And now Israel, verse 3 says, loved Joseph more than his other children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, here it comes. Uh -oh. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. Boy, oh boy. and could not speak peaceably unto him. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. They hated him, but they couldn't speak peaceably unto him. They couldn't speak nicely to him. Mm -hmm. They were always, the opposite of peace is what? There's going to be some anger there. Yeah, There's going strife. to be some yeah. strife there. Yeah. There's going to be, they're always speaking words that are going to kind of try to push his button, push right. his button, push his button. That's right. what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So those words come to us when People don't like us. Mm, People yeah. hate us. His brothers hated him. And so these words are coming to him that are, that are trying to push his buttons. Mm -hmm. And it says, going on, we're not, we're not finished with this, with this hate thing yet because it says in verse 5 that Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet more. Oh my. <laughs> it just gets worse, right? Yeah, yeah. You've got this hatred coming because his dad loves him more than the others because he's a snitch or he's, you know, being, you know, I, actually he's being honest, right? Well, he's then, being honest yeah. with his dad. He's talking to his dad about what the brothers are doing. So he's kind of bringing a report. It's an evil report. That's not his fault. Mm -hmm. It's the brother's fault. Mm -hmm. But of course, when you're in that kind of a situation, and then you add to the fact that Joseph favors him. Then you add to the fact that he's having these dreams. And then you add to the fact that he's got this coat of many colors. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Things are just building. Things are mounting here. And so he goes on in verse 6, it says, And he said unto them, Hear ye, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Mm -hmm. Now, you know he's 17 because, you know, as you get older, you start picking up, you start sensing some of these things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. Joseph's just acting like, you know, <laughs> hey, you got to hear the dream I dreamed. You know, yeah, okay. They don't even want to know that he had a dream, oh, right? Yeah, you right. got to hear this dream that I dreamed. It's all about how you're going to... Uh -oh bow down to me and I'm yeah. going to be the leader here. You know, I was like, Joseph, I mean, the guy is just, yeah. in a sense, he's just innocent and yeah. honest, and straightforward. Dad, I can't believe these guys are out in the field and they killed this lamb and they're eating it. And, mm. and, 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 and hey, look, look at this dream that God gave me yeah. and check this. Oh, look at my new coat that dad gave me. <laughs> and he, mm -hmm. and the brothers are just there, you know, the older brothers are just thinking, you know, they're thinking all kinds of hate. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And he's just kind of going along, you know, I mean, by the time we get to the end of the story, Joseph is just shocked mm. awake, right? He yeah. wakes up in the shock of the evil that comes upon him. And I think sometimes mm. in this world, friends, you know, we, we, we talk about, you know, the young and the innocent and truly, you know, our kids are many mm. times young and innocent. And then all of a sudden the cruelty and the evil of this world yeah. just wakes them up. It wakes us mm. up. I still remember when I made that transition, you know, from the young and the innocent um, to a realization of how evil and wicked this world was. And it changes you. It hardens you. You lose that innocence, that youthful innocence, and you grow and and hopefully you can mature. You know, we've got a choice at that point. Are we going to become like the evil that has impacted us or are we going to mature in a different direction? Mm. And so the story goes on here. It it's actually gets a little bit worse before it gets better. So behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, he said, and lo, my sheaf rose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf. They bowed down to my sheaf. And verse 8, and his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? <laughs> or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And mm. they hated him yeah. yet the more. Mm. There was more room for hate. Mm. Yeah. You know, 
this is one of the things that this chapter brings out quite clearly, and that is hate has no boundaries. Mm. You know, you can have a little bit of hate and a little bit more hate and a little bit more hate on top of that. And the devil will always put more hate into you. That's a fact. He's always going to mm. stuff yes. it in there. He's going to push it in there. And so they hated him because he was a snitch, because he was telling. They hated him because his father loved him. They hated him because he had this jacket. They hated him even mm. more because he had this dream. And they hated him even more oh. when he told them about the dreams. Yeah. Hate just continues to build. You've got to get off the hate cycle. We need to get off the hate That's train. That's right. We need to just jump off that hate train mm -hmm. and let God take all that hate away from us yeah. so that He can replace it with His love and with His yeah. grace. Yes. And he dreamed yet another dream and he told it to his brethren. Oh, sometimes I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, mercy. Joseph, what are you doing here, right? Oh my. Behold, I've dreamed the dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me and he told it to his father and his mm -hmm. brethren and his father rebuked him. Oh. And his father said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and my brother and thy brethren indeed come and bow down uh, ourselves to thee on the earth? There's, a, there's symbolism here. The, the woman in Revelation 12 is, is clothed with the, the sun and the moon and the stars as a symbol of God's people. Mm -hmm. And his brethren not only hated him, now they envied him. Mercy. But his father, uh -oh. who had rebuked him, observed the saying. That word observed means he hedged about, he guarded, he protected, and he attended to the saying. Mm -hmm. He was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's something going on here with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Not only do I favor him, but it, it appears that God is favoring him also. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're favored of God, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to face an incredible amount of trials. And they're for a couple of reasons. One reason is, is because when God favors you, and God favors all of us, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, that puts you as a target to the enemy, to the mm -hmm. devil, right? But number two is because God, when he favors you, he wants to prepare you mm -hmm. for the position, the responsibility, mm -hmm. the work that he has for you to perform. And part of that preparation, of course, is to learn how to be a servant. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, we're Christians. Jesus Christ is our great uh, example, mm -hmm. and he came to serve. And this is the lesson that, that Joseph is going to be taught by God. Yeah. And he's going to be taught this by becoming a slave. He's going to be taught this by going through some tremendous trials. And we're going to be talking about those. But in all of this, all of this leads Joseph to put his trust more strongly in mm -hmm. the Heavenly Father, Amen. to put his trust more strongly in God. So it's going to be a great lesson as we go through this. Mm -hmm. It's just begun. We just laid the foundation. Pastor Ryan Day Take it, take it from there. <laughs> All right. Okay, you know we were we were talking yesterday, uh, and, and as we were been going through these studies and 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 uh, chatting with each other about the studies that we've been uh, doing, and it's amazing. I, I, if you know, so many people. We we live in a world where people love drama, mm. and I can tell you, <laughs> all these drum, drama shows on television, they got nothing on the Bible. I'm telling you, even right here in Genesis, <laughs> there's just it's so much full of drama and 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 excitement and and and, and so much emo. It's like an emotion taking you on an emotional roller coaster, mm. and uh, and the story of Joseph does not uh, fail in any in any sense because when you get through this story by the end, you just feel like wow. It's amazing to see what this young man went through. Mm. But I have uh, Monday's lesson. My name is Ryan Day. I have Monday's lesson, which is entitled The Attack on Joseph. So mm. basically what Pastor James just shared on how we see this, this envy, this hate, this hatred building, 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 building from Joseph's brothers. And now it's, they're, they're about to take action because oh. their hatred and their jealousy and just all of that passion in a negative sense that's building up in their heart towards him, it, it explodes. And so mm. here we go. Genesis mm. chapter 37. I'm going to start with verse 12. Wow. And the Bible says, Then his brothers went to feed their flocks, or their father's flocks, in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. And he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he set him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now, I me, mean, I, I kind of see things a little bit different light sometimes. I, 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 I kind of try to look at both sides here and put myself in Joseph's shoes, put myself in the brother's shoes. And, you know, there has to be, again, you, don't, you only have to go off what the text says. We have to, we have to only go off what the text says. But I have to imagine that this isn't something that Jacob 
is completely oblivious to, right? He's, he's seeing the, the tension that's building between Joseph and his brothers. He's seeing the actions and somehow, you know, sometimes how Joseph, even in his innocence, can probably come across maybe a little bit, you know, well. could use some humility, maybe a little bit of arrogance, maybe boasting sometimes, you know, from the brother's perspective. And they're looking at this going, look at this little, look at this little, <laughs> this, 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 uh -huh. this kid who just stays West in the Daddy. tents all day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're out here working hard and he's yeah. just in the tent in the cool, you know, dreaming his little dreams. And so the jealousy just builds, builds, builds. You could imagine as a father, I'm surprised Jacob could, he couldn't click with him to say, you know, maybe I should, I should probably go with him. Maybe I probably shouldn't send him by himself because the brothers have been, you know, they've been angry with him. And so, you know, I, I was just thinking of, you know, we have to understand that even though the Bible says nothing negative as far as flaws towards the character of Joseph, because he was a righteous man. And I believe in his youthful innocence, he was doing all that he thought was right. But sometimes that can come across yes. in his innocence uh, to, to some people. You know, when you try to take, you know, darkness and put it with, what does the Bible say there? I had a, I had a text for that. Second Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Do not unequally yoke yourself together with unbelievers well. for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what accord has Christ with Belial and or, or what has a, a believer with an unbeliever? What part does a believer have with unbelievers? Mm -hmm. So you could see there's some strife here. Yes. The, the, the two seeds, right? The two seeds from Genesis 3.15 are present in this story. Yeah. The brothers, the seed of the serpent, and Joseph, the seed of the woman. And so, uh, you know, there, there's, some, there's some tension definitely building here. And so now we go on with the story in verse 15. It says, Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, what are you seeking? Mm -hmm. And so he said, I'm, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are uh, feeding their flocks. Mm -hmm. Then the man said, they have departed from here, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. So they're not, they're not where the father expects them to be. They done went somewhere else. Uh -oh. And now that's going to make matters even worse because now here comes Joseph mm -hmm. off in the direction that they thought they were going to go to escape Joseph's drama and their father. You know, they're already, I'm sure, upset with their father because the Bible says he favored them, uh -oh. right? And that's not right. I mean, let's just be honest. It's not right. But the truth of the matter is he, the Bible says he loved Joseph. He, he, they, they perceived that he loved Joseph more than them. And so they hated Joseph for that. They were jealous. Mm. And so now here he comes to Dotham. He's, he's hunting them down. <laughs> and so now we see in verse 18 here, it says, now when they saw him afar off, you could just imagine the things that was happening in their minds and what they were talking about. It says, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and, and we shall say some wild beast has devoured wow. him. Mm -hmm. He shall see what will become of, we shall see what will become of his dreams. So again, they're, they're already plotting. And of course, let's just be honest, what spirit is behind this? Oh, Who's yeah. behind oh, all of this yeah. planning, this plotting oh. to kill Joseph? Yeah. It's none other than the devil himself. Mm -hmm. Because the devil understands he's still looking back from Genesis 3.15. He's waiting for that seed to come. And Joseph looks like the prime person mm -hmm. that that uh -huh. seed's going to come through. So the devil's like, you know what? I'm going to use the brothers. I'm, sometimes, can the devil oh. sometimes use family huh. against family? Absolutely. I mean, the last people in the world that some people expect to come against them, yeah. uh, you know, especially when a person is living for God or trying mm -hmm. to be, you know, righteous and live the holiest life that they can, uh, you know, the devil will use the, the most, the people that you wouldn't think he would use. And that's family. Mm -hmm. In this case, Joseph is experiencing that. Mm -hmm. And so we shall see what shall become of his dreams. You could just sense and, and, and uh. tell that you could see the hatred. The, the, I mean, it's, I don't even know if hatred is the right <laughs> word. They, mm -hmm. they despise yeah. him. Him to, to the to the utmost. And so verse 21, it says, but Reuben heard it. So Reuben's the oldest. Mm -hmm. uh, Reuben, you know, he's, he's the eldest, but he's not in too good favor with his father, right? For, for some of his past actions. But Reuben heard it, the Bible says, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Mm -hmm. And Reuben said to them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness and do not lay a hand on him that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So notice here, this is quite interesting. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Sometimes people skip over this. Mm -hmm. Reuben is actually taken up for him. He recognizes mm -hmm. this isn't right. Mm -hmm. We can't kill the boy. Mm -hmm. This is our father's son. This is our brother. Mm -hmm. And so he says, look, let's just kind of teach him a lesson. Let's throw him in this pit. You know, let him know that, hey, we're not going to take your mess anymore. We don't like your little dreams. We don't like your little, you know, whatever it is. You know, we don't want to deal with that. Let's just teach him a lesson throw him in the pit. Mm -hmm. And then Reuben's idea was to come back later from wherever he was and take him out of the pit so he can bring him back to his mm -hmm. father. 
Hmm. But the story doesn't end there. Well. Verse 23, so it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers and they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of oh. many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit hmm. and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. These brothers over there just haven't just eaten a meal and their brothers in this pit. And he goes on to say, oh. then they lifted their eyes and looked and there was a company of Ishmaelites yeah. coming from Gilead. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, on, with their camels bearing spices, balm and myrrh and on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, now Judah Whoa. speaks up and he says to his yeah. brothers, what profit is there Judah. if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh. Well. And our brothers, and, and, and notice, and his brothers listened. They said, okay, fine, we're not going to kill him, but you know what? We can't have this, this, as the Bible would say, this lad, we can't have this lad around anymore. Mm -hmm. We got to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And so verse 28, then Midianite traders passed by and the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold uh -oh. him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of my silver. My. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Now you're kind of seeing this, you know, the Joseph, the imagery yeah. from, from, from Joseph to Christ. He's a type of Christ. Jesus, as Jesus was sold for silver, we see Joseph in, in his righteous state. He's being sold uh, for, for doing nothing wrong, really. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it goes on to say, then Reuben, verse 29, then Reuben returned to the pit and indeed Joseph was not in the pit and he tore his clothes and he returned to his brothers and said, the lad is no more and I, where shall I go? Yeah. So Reuben's upset. You know, his brothers have, have gotten rid of him. He's no longer there where he thought he was going to return back now to retrieve him and take him back to daddy. That's not happening mm -hmm. though. Verse 31, so they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats and dipped the tunic in the blood oh. and they sent the tunic of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? Mm -hmm. Such deceit, mm -hmm. such deceit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then verse 33, and he recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him without mm -hmm. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and, and, and put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son many days. Mm -hmm. And all of his sons and all of his daughters arose to comfort him. And he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall now go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And then verse 36 ends with, now the Midianites had sold him into Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and mm -hmm. captain of the guard. You know, it's interesting because you can see that the devil's behind this. Oh, yeah. The devil attacked the law, which is, represents the righteous character of God in heaven long before there was an Adam or an Eve or an earth. And now we see even all the way down through uh, this, this fallen humanity, we see it right here in the character. These brothers mm. had broken half of the Ten Commandments. Mercy. For instance, honor thy father and mother. That one's gone. They dishonored their father. True. You shall not murder, you know, mm. even though they didn't kill him. Remember what Jesus said, yeah, if you yeah, hate your right. brother, it's just as well as you murdering yeah, him, right? right. You shall not steal. They tore this tunic. They stole this tunic that the father had given them. They were thieves. You shall not bear false witness. Did they lie? Yeah, of course, the seed is flooded in this yes. story. And you shall not covet. They were jealous of their brother. They wanted what he had, but they couldn't have it. And therefore it led them to a jealous, uh, more, more uh, hot-headed and hardened heart, a horrible spirit to do what they'd done to their brother. It's, it's, it's a twisted story, but at yes. the end of the day, Righteousness prevails. Amen. Truth wins, mm -hmm. and Jesus uh, gains the victory through Joseph. And we'll see that as we go. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. So right. we are yeah. starting well mm -hmm. in this last section of the book of Genesis, these last three lessons. Don't go away. We're going to be right back. Mm -hmm. Ever wish you could watch a 3 ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. Hi friends, welcome back to our study in Genesis chapters 37 and onward. We're passing it over to Pastor Kenny Shelton. Yeah, praise the Lord. This is Tuesday's lesson and it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's dynamite. If you have your Bibles, make sure you turn to the book of Genesis chapter 38 because it, it, you have to read the whole chapter. In order to find out what's going on here, in order to get, you know, start and find in the middle of it and come to an end and you have to read the, the, the whole chapter. And then by the grace of God, I'm going to move quickly and try to go through a lot of things that went on here. Uh, this gives us account certainly of, of Judah and his family. 
with all their missteps, all their sins, all their wrong choices, you know, sins, everything. As the bottom line that's been brought out here, good, God's plan will be fulfilled. Yeah. Man's not going to mess it up. And so God's still in charge. Now, let's look at, at this chapter, and I'm just going to break it down into four parts here quickly. Uh, the chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 38, verse 1 through 11. Here's what we find down. Here's what we find. Judah's Judah gets married. Now, we're, we're going to break down and, and go into this a little bit more and find out how you know, young he was when he got married and what all took place. But his marriage came along with some issues. Mm -hmm. You know, again, going where God didn't want him to go and doing different things. So we'll look into that. And then down in verses uh, 12 through 23, we find Judah's incest with his daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, Tamar. Notice and without him even knowing it. So it starts to get complicated. He didn't know it. How, what do you mean he didn't know it? How, so how did this really take place? Three, he dealt with verses 24 through 26. How he dealt with it when it came to light. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible said, be sure your sins will find you, will, will find you out. They found him out. Mm -hmm. And then how did he deal with it? Four, the birth of his twin sons, verse 27 there, Genesis 28, mm -hmm. 38, in him and his family was built up. So it's very important. Now, during this lesson, this brings out a, I want to say uh, some sordid things that went on in this story. And so, you know, it's not going to a whole lot of detail about it. You look at it and you say, you know, God is merciful and God is good and God does have a plan and it will be fulfilled. But we see that, uh, I think... Brother James, you mentioned that God takes, you know, some of the evil things and he, he has a way of turning them into good things. Yeah. This is what he's doing right here. He's showing us certainly there's hope for us. Praise God for that. Especially I found out when it was linked to salvation, right. salvational things and, and God's plan was good. In right, right. Genesis, uh, so where did Judah go wrong? Now, go wrong. We talk about men. You said 17, you say 15, you say 14 and 13. They were getting married at that age. Mm -hmm. Things were going on. They were having children. Mm -hmm. A lot different than we think about maybe today. Genesis 38, 1. Notice, I'm just going to look where Judah first went wrong. Uh, you'll say, well, that might be in the second thing. But notice Judah, you know, he's probably, some say 14, some say 15 or 16. So he's very, he's very young. Now, notice what he did. He left his family in uh, Genesis 38, 1, and he says he went down. Mm. Mm. Now, no, that, those words are not good. He went down. You know, we're, we're, we're just striving to go up. Isn't that right? right? But notice he left his family and he went down and he mingled with whom? The, the Canaanites. Mm. It's been said, especially with young people, and I think this holds true. When they change their company, they change their manners. Mm. That's good. Interesting. When you're around, you sometimes become like that. If this happens... And many times it does. It can be fatal. So let's not overlook that part. A bad decision sometimes opens up the door to another bad decision. Mm. True. Yeah. So how important is decisions? How, how important are they? Uh, Ministry of Healing, I like this. Page 510 says this. Short and decisive are the steps that lead men down from high and holy ground to a low level. In a moment's decision, you've been there probably, I know I've been there. A moment's decision may be made that fixes one's condition mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. How important are decisions? Well, yeah. can fix our destination forever. One failure to overcome leaves a soul unguarded. Mm -hmm. One evil habit, if not firmly resisted, will strengthen into chains of steel, binding the whole man. So... Uh, was saying that, we have to say, then how can we make good decisions? Well, let's just use Jacob for an example, shall we? Again, Ministry of Healing, page 511 says this. It was through faith, I like this, and prayer mm -hmm. that Jacob, from being a man of, notice this, feebleness and sin, became a, ooh, a prince with God. Notice this. This is really heavy. As our spirit may be so identified with his that in thought and aim, we shall be one with him. Mm. Man, that should be, that's our goal. Our objective is to be one with him. Isn't that right? Let his mind be in us. Judah finds, find out, Judah finds a, a, a Canaanite. I want to say, first of all, in first mistake, he went down. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew he wasn't supposed to go there. We know there's principles about it. God told him, don't be messing with the Canaanites right. because of all the problems. So now Judah, again, 15 so years old, he goes down and he begins to, messed around in the, 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 you know, with the Canaanites. He finds himself a wife, Genesis 38, 2. Now he has three sons. Notice the firstborn is old enough. When he's old enough, Judah, what does he do again? 
he goes back down to Canaan to get a wife for him. Mm. He's really making matters worse here, right? God says don't do it, encouraging don't, don't, don't do that. Canaanite wife. Now, now it, it, it's Tamar. Now notice the firstborn is wild and he's wicked and he dies. Interesting, huh? The second son uh, is to take her. We know that when the son, one son dies and then the wife, the childless, right? The next son comes up, next son, and is supposed to wed her mm. and take her and, and raise seed for his brother. Well, the brother said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not going to happen. I don't, I'm not going to do that." He refuses to raise the family in remembrance of his brother, mm. and so he also was wicked. I mean, the first son, wicked, you know, he, he died early. Mm. Second son, wicked, he died early. Mm. So you see all the setup there, right there. The third son, you know, Judah saying, "Hmm, third son, now, oh, he's too young." Mm. So, so uh, Tamar, go back to your home and you wait until he's older, and then you can marry him. Mm. So did, did she really want to wait that long? Judah put off the arrangement and does not fulfill his promise. I got a feeling she was getting a little bit ner- nervous there. Then suddenly the death of his two older sons, I want you to think about that for a moment. And promised his third son, all of a sudden he's starting to feel something. Mm. What happened to my other two sons? <laughs> did she have something to do with that possibly? And now I'm going to say, now the third son is going to be promised to her. He said, I'm going to put it off for a while. So really, maybe, possibly he had no intentions of fulfilling that promise that he made. So we're having deceit. We're having incest. We're having all kinds of problems going on here, right? But it, it gets a little bit deeper as, as, as we go along here. Uh, I'm going to bring another point here. I think I just about missed it. I don't want to really miss that point. Um, Judah says... Uh, Again, go back home. Don't forget to go back home and wait until, you know, of age. And then when he comes of age, then you can get married. Well, you know, one bad thing leads up to another. We realize that. And so even in, in, in our life, you may have that going on right now. Something's happening. You've got bad things. Now all of a sudden what? Mm-hmm. Some worse things seem like to be coming on the scene. Suddenly the death of his two older sons off after the marriage to Tamar. And I notice, again, he hesitated. He put it off. And again, I don't think... It, he intended for it to be fulfilled. Mm. She had something. She, did she have something to do with his death? Well, we find out that uh, was, was, third son was Sheila, I think. Wasn't that the name? A little different maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, the youngest son became of age. He was not given to her. So what did, what did, what did Tamar, Tamar do? Tamar do? She was a childless widow and she decided to take matters into her own hands. Mm. Right? And so she decides, okay, I can't have the sons and I'm going to have dad. Mm. Kind of interesting thought. Mm. And so he had lost his wife. Uh, then it was time for the, we call it the shearing of the sheep. Mm-hmm. After a time of, of getting over the death of his wife and so on and so forth, he goes up and he's going to shear some sheep. Mm-hmm. But along with shearing of sheep, you say, well, that's going out to work. There was a time of festivities that went along. When you said you were shearing sheep, you also was doing other things. Mm-hmm. And she found out that's where he was going. So she made a plan to deceive him mm-hmm. and to go up there and basically saying, you know, I'm going to have the son mm-hmm. and it's going to be through dad. And so she dressed, as it were, with, as, as, as a prostitute. She covered her face. He did not know it. And when he went up and then fun and game, whatever was going on, uh, he, you know, they made an arrangement and she became pregnant, you know, with twins, as we well know. Mm. But he did not know that. But he, remember, he didn't have money to pay her for this, right? She was playing the prostitute. When he found out three months later, right, that witnesses come by and they say, oh, you know, your daughter-in-law, she's pregnant. He's going, by. Oh, what's going on here? Mm. You know, well, I'm going to find out what's going on with this right here. And he said, well, well we're just going to burn her. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was one of the things, you know, that could happen. And sometimes it's a, it's a, a seal in the forehead, it can, can be. And also it can be literally burning. He was, he was in charge. He could have happened. But, uh, you know, I think the story is very interesting because uh, she was associated with the Assyrians and their customs and so on and so forth. She knew. She knew. Mm-hmm. That if dad didn't fulfill his promise, that's also that what she could, she could go to dad and dad would have to fulfill that. Wow. A little different than what sometimes we, we think is going on. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, sheep sharing time, we have to be careful at sheep sharing time. <laughs> Remember, things are going on, God is greater, God is bi- bigger, and he's going to fulfill the promises that he's made. Hang on to him, not the world. Mm-hmm. Mm, amen. Wow. Thank you all so much. That's, that's a heavy chapter. Oh, and mine sir. is the opposite. Oh. We get into, I'm Jill Morricone. I have Wednesday, Joseph, a slave in Egypt. And we see here Joseph resisting temptation. Mm. Oh, Where we yeah. see Judah stepping yes. into yes. sin, we see Joseph resisting temptation. Mm. 
So Joseph arrives in Egypt. The chapter of what Pastor Kenny had with Judah and Tamar is kind of that interlude between. We're picking up right where Pastor Ryan had left off. Joseph was sold as a slave to Potiphar, captain of the King's Guard mm -hmm. there in Egypt. So I have, if we're going to get through it, eight, <laughs> uh, five takeaways yeah. from Joseph's temptation and then eight lessons that you and I can learn as we deal with temptation. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right in. Genesis chapter 39, verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Mm. Takeaway number one, when all seems lost, God yeah. is still in control. Amen. I try it. If you were in Joseph's shoes, if yeah. I was in his shoes, you'd say, wait a minute, I went from a favored son to a slave. I'm a slave here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I'm estranged mm -hmm. from my family. I'm never going to see them again. When all seems lost, God is still in control mm -hmm. and he still has a plan. Next verse, verse two. The Lord was with Joseph. He was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Takeaway number two, when you least expect it, mm. God intervenes. Yeah. The Lord was with Joseph right. and the Lord made him a success yeah. as he was a slave yeah. there in right. Egypt. Mm -hmm. The next verse, verse three. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Verse four. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he put under his authority. Mm -hmm. Takeaway number three. When you faithfully serve, God will bless you. Amen. I love yeah. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Do you see a man who's diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not no. stand before mean men, is what the King James right. says. Well. So when you faithfully serve, God blesses. The next yes. verse, yes. verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. Why? for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Well. Takeaway number four, when you belong to God, the people around you are affected. I love that. The Lord blessed Potiphar's house. Did he serve God? No. Was he a follower of um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No. But God blessed him, an unbeliever, right. because a believer of the true God was faithfully serving God in the midst of his household. So when you belong to God, your spouse is affected. Your children are affected. Mm. Your coworkers are affected. That's right. Your boss is affected. Yes. Your subordinates are affected. When you belong to God, other people are affected. Mm -hmm. That's right. Verse six, we're in Genesis 39, verse six, the first half of the verse. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Mm -hmm. He did not know what he had except the bread which he ate. Well. Takeaway number five, when you follow God, other people trust you. Potiphar trusted Joseph with everything that he had in his house. Mm -hmm. Now we come to the turning point in the story. It seemed like he goes from the slave where he's beaten down and he's nothing and he rises, right? Yes. Because of the blessing of the Lord upon him to a level of um, management there, overseeing everything in Potiphar's house. And now we see there's trouble in paradise. Uh -oh. The second half of verse uh -oh. six. Mm -hmm. Now Joseph mm -hmm. was handsome in form Easy and now. appearance. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting to me, the Word of God usually doesn't say what people <laughs> look like, right? We don't know what Mary, the mother of Jesus, looked like. And yeah. we, we don't know a lot of people, we don't know what they look like. Mm -hmm. But it says Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. The word for form in Hebrew is outline, form, or figure. Well. So that means his body. Joseph is well built. Mm -hmm. The word for appearance is literally countenance. He had a good looking face. So he had a good looking face and a good looking body. It's actually the same two Hebrew words mm -hmm. that is used to describe Rachel, Joseph's yeah. mama. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 29, 17, right. it says Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. See. The same two words. So he must have gotten his looks from his mother. Mm -hmm. And Potiphar's wife begins to take notice. Uh -oh. Let's look at verse seven through 10. We see the temptation. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Mm. 
But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has into my hand. Mm -hmm. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, well, because mm -hmm. you're his wife. Yes. How then can I do this great wickedness yes. and sin against God? Yes. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. Sometimes when Satan cannot get us with discouragement, uh -huh. he tries pleasure. Mm. Joseph oh. had faithfully served God in discouragement, mm. in trying times, and Joseph would not bend. He faithfully served God. And so mm. Satan says, I'm going to try something else. Right. So let's look at these lessons, if we get through them, eight lessons that you and I can learn when dealing with temptation. All right. Lesson number one, make decisions on principle, Amen. not by how you feel. Was Joseph tempted by Potiphar's wife? The Bible doesn't explicitly say that, but if you study what Egyptian women wore and the fact that she clearly came on to him, mm. I would have to say he was probably tempted. James chapter one, yeah. verses 14 and 15, what does it say? Each one is tempted mm -hmm. when he's drawn away yeah. by his own desires and enticed. Mm. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Yeah. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Yeah. You see, desire is not wrong and feeling is not wrong. It is what we do well. with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's that old saying that I love. You can't stop the birds <laughs> from flying over your head, uh -oh. but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. Mm -hmm. Make decisions on principle, not by how you That's feel. Right. Lesson number two, make decisions on how it affects God, not yourself yeah. or even other people. Uh -huh. What did Joseph say? How can I do this great wickedness and hurt yes. you? No and sin against God. Mm -hmm. We often think, oh, this little thing, won't, it won't hurt me. It's no big deal. I'm not hurting anybody but myself. No, mm -hmm. it's hurting God. Mm -hmm. David, after his sin with Bathsheba, this Psalm of confession, Psalm chapter 51, what did he say in verse four? Mm -hmm. Against you, you only have I sinned mm -hmm. and done this evil in your sight. Mm -hmm. Had he hurt Bathsheba? Absolutely. Had he hurt Bathsheba's husband? Absolutely. Mm -hmm but the sin was against God himself. Make decisions based on how it impacts God. Yes. Number three, once you've made your decision, stick with it. Don't change your mind. Mm -hmm. She spoke to him day by day, but he didn't listen to her. Mm -hmm. Number four, sometimes drastic action is required. Okay. We're back in Genesis 39 verses 11 and 12. It happened at this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men were inside the house that she caught him by the garment saying, lie with him. But he left the garment in her hand and he turned and he ran outside. Mm. You know, Matthew 9, 43 to 47 has an interesting um, mm. connection. It says, if your hand causes you to sin, oh. cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Mm. If your eye causes you to sin, cut it off. Jesus is not promoting self-mutilation. Right. He's saying that sin needs to de be dealt with quickly at any cost. Yeah. Do not explain away sin. Do not excuse it. Do not rationalize right. sin. Do not minimize sin. Mm. When drastic action is required, you take the drastic action. Mm. Number five, yes. nay, make no provision for the flesh. Mm. Mm. Romans 13 verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus yes. Christ and do not make provision for the flesh. Sin needs to be dealt with quickly at any cost. Yes. For instance, if your issue is pornography, you cut off the internet. You throw away your magazines. You cancel that subscription. Do not have things in your home that cause you to stumble. Mm -hmm. That's right. Number six, mm -hmm. accept the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything without the That's power right. of the Holy Spirit living yes. in us. Number seven, utilize the power of the Word of God. God's Word works in our hearts to free us from sin. Yes. Number eight, crucify the flesh, that old man or that old woman of sin. Joseph's decision to stand for right cost him his job. It cost him his freedom, yet it was the right decision. His mm -hmm. master's wife falsely accused him. Yes. He was thrown into prison, yet even there God showed up. In Genesis 39, the last verse says God was with him. Yes. God showed him mercy and showed him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Mm -hmm. So stand for God. You yeah. will never regret it. Amen. Amen. Wow. wow. Lord. wow. Thank yes. Thank you. Thank you for passing that on to me yeah. the way you have, because when he's thrown in prison, I must begin by saying God's providence knows no haste. Ooh. 
and no delay. Every experience we are called to endure has an expiration date. Every <laughs> setback is a setup for a comeback. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here we are, Joseph standing firmly. I'm John Lomacang, and we're going to walk through Genesis chapter 40 and 41. What I've noticed about the author of this lesson, he has made us read. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and my wife and I have taken this on as a project together, reading this lesson through together and how enhancing it has been. Every setback is a setup for a divine comeback. Mm -hmm. When you stand for what's right, God never abandons you, but he holds you in a position where your timing is a moment for God to be exalted. Mm. Now, Joseph, lovely the way you established that, Jesus. Uh, uh, what, what a lovely way you established how Jesus works. Yes. Thank you so much. Every experience we are called to endure has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. But if we would hold on when the trials pass, well. when the trials finally pass, we will see that God's providence has always been in charge. When we take a stand for what is right, God will cause our difficulty to be reversed for our blessing. Now we look at the story in Genesis chapter 40 and 41. Mm. We begin by the baker oh. and the butler. Well. I want to begin in Genesis chapter 40 and um, I'm just going to walk through the story rather than the reading because it was a lot of reading. <laughs> mm -hmm. You find uh, the <laughs> butler and the baker made a wrong decision and ended up incarcerated. Mm. But it was not a coincidence. Okay. Even both of them being incarcerated, I looked back on the story and said, well, if they were not incarcerated, they would not have met Joseph. Right. And in their incarceration, they both had a dream, but they could not interpret the dream. Uh, one, let me just go ahead and read verses 9 and 11 mm -hmm. about the, the chief butler. Mm -hmm. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, behold, in my dream, a vine was before me. Uh -huh. And in the vine were three branches. Mm -hmm. And it was as though it budded. Mm -hmm. Its blossoms shot forth and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Mm -hmm. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Mm -hmm. And, and it made, Joseph made it very clear when, when the butler couldn't understand it. He said in verse 8, do not interpretations belong to God? Mm -hmm. Tell them to me, please. And so <laughs> the butler is telling him, and this turns out that the dream that the butler had meant that the chief butler would be restored. Come on. But then the baker said, well, I had a dream too. <laughs> he should not have told a dream. Well. <laughs> Verse 16 to 17 of Genesis chapter 40. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream and mm. there were three white baskets mm. on my head. Mm. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. Mm. And Joseph probably said, <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that dream <laughs> because it turned out that the chief baker would be hanged mm -hmm. and the birds would eat his flesh. Yes. It's a sad story, but, wow. but Joseph said, when you tell these dreams to Pharaoh, please remember me. And the Bible said in verse 23 of Genesis chapter 40, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Yeah. Now I look at this as not coincidental, but once again, mm -hmm. because sometimes people will say, and they will get upset with people that appear to forget them, but God blocked mm -hmm. because this very disappointment was really a preparation for a divine appointment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can be released from our suffering, but it has no purpose to serve in God's broader picture. The, the deliverance had to be done a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's where we get to Pharaoh's dream in Genesis chapter 41, okay. verses 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. And by the way, mm -hmm. the way that Joseph was called to that moment is when Pharaoh told his dream to the butler, the butler said, I was in prison and there was a guy that was in there that yeah. not only told me what my dream was, but it came to pass exactly the way he said it would. And so they went and called for Joseph, cleaned him up, mm -hmm. dressed him up, and he came before the king, mm -hmm. before Pharaoh. 
And here's what the Bible records about that meeting. The details are phenomenal. You should read the story. He says in verse 15, I've ha I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you mm. that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Mm -hmm. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. Yes. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll find in both instances, the butler, the baker and Pharaoh, you find in both instances, Joseph did not take the credit to himself. Yes, that's right. One of the things that we have to keep in mind, especially those of us who are in public life, mm -hmm. whenever somebody compliments you, always give the glory to God. That's good. Don't say, wow, you know, you know, that was really good. You, you really like that? I could do it again next week. No, <laughs> always give the glory to God. Because I know that each one of us has a gift that God has entrusted right, to us. Right. God has not said, this is your gift. Do it as you please. No, every gift that we have was given to us by God. Always give glory to God. Amen. So when I look at the story, uh, Joe, uh, um, I said, Joe, I'm thinking of Jill. Jill. <laughs> I called you Julie in the past. I'm not about to call you Joe. Thank you. Okay. I have four specific takeaways about how okay. God works. Amen. First of all, Amos 3 and verse 7, God is the revealer mm -hmm. of all secret That's things. Right. And I love the way he considers his servants in the, in the scenario of revealing what mm -hmm. is secret to everyone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveal his secrets to That's his right. servants, the prophets. I told somebody once, I said, God has secrets, <laughs> but he doesn't tell everyone. Yeah. And he says, really? Mm -hmm. And it was another pastor. Mm. He said, what are those secrets? Yeah. I said, well, you got to be God's servant to know. <laughs> and he was desirous. And when I revealed it by God's word, he said, that's phenomenal. Yeah. God reveals secrets. He is yeah. the revealer of all secrets. Number two, God is the guardian of all secrets. Mm. Yes. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret mm -hmm. things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us yeah. and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of, the, of his, this law. If God, is, if God is guarding a secret mm. that he doesn't want you to know, don't presume on God and continue begging God mm -hmm. when his desire is for you not to know. Huh. Let's go back to the beginning of Genesis. What happened yeah. when Satan said, God has something he doesn't want you to know. And Eve and Adam fell into the pit of trying to find out what God determined to guard. Mm. The third one, God's knowledge supersedes our intellect. Yes. Isaiah 55 verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So this is something that amazes me. I, I used to hear about, well, not used to, but I still hear about people getting degrees. And it always bothers me when I hear the phrase, somebody just got their master of divinity. Uh -oh. And I always ask myself, how can you master divinity? <laughs> now, I understand they may have fulfilled the requirements in the course, but I think they need to change that from a master of divinity <laughs> to an accomplishment of a master's degree. But we can never master divinity. I thought, how, what degree did you get? A master's of divinity. <laughs> now understand, I'm putting this in the proper context. Right. That seems kind of cocky to me <laughs> that we could ever master <laughs> divinity. Excuse yeah. me, that's where I am right now. It's all right. The fourth one, God's knowledge transcends our <laughs> speculation. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God's foreknowledge transcends our speculation. That's right. If you don't understand it, don't speculate. That's right. Wait for God to reveal it in yes. his time. So the question is, how can we learn to trust God and cling to his promises even when it does not appear that providence is in charge at all? Four very quick points. God took Joseph mm -hmm. from incarceration to liberation. Nice. Yes. Wait on God. God traded Joseph's humiliation for exaltation. Yes. But only in his time. Mm -hmm. God transforms yes. Joseph's condemnation to commendation. Mm -hmm. And finally, Joseph rose in God's time from pits 
to palaces. Mm -hmm. That's why we know all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose, mm -hmm. Romans 8, 28. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Great lesson study yes. from each one of us. So just to close things up, we've got a couple of minutes just to summarize our lessons for this uh, week. Ryan? You know, Joseph's brothers lacked a lot of love. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that love can only come by the working of the power of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And, you know, what comes to my mind is the text in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verses 4 and onward. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Mm -hmm. Love is not puffed up. Love uh, does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, you know, we need, we need that power of love in our life. And it can only come by surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, some of the things that we've encountered and we went over here, it got kind of messy. But God sure straightened it out, and that's good. And it's just, it's just a couple of little lines from a little song that I learned many years ago. It says, for his eye is on the sparrow, mm -hmm. and I know he watches me. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I had Genesis 39, which is really all about temptation. And none of us can escape temptation. Mm. It's because we live in this world of sin. So I want to encourage you, whether you have been tempted and have fallen, whether you are right now struggling with that temptation, mm. reach out to Jesus. Amen. He can forgive. He can cleanse. He can give you victory. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yes. And... Genesis 40 and 41 is simply a beautiful lesson in waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Isaiah tells us clearly in Isaiah 40 and verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings mm -hmm. like eagles. Mm -hmm. on, they shall yeah. run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. They shall walk and not faint. If you're in a pit, wait on God. Mm -hmm. You'll eventually be in a palace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a good lesson study this week from Genesis chapter 37 through Genesis 41. And one of the main points that I think, uh, Pastor John, you brought out that I loved, mm -hmm. that I think can summarize the whole lesson study is that our trials have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're just, as it says in Psalm 23, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Keep on walking Amen. with the Lord. Yeah. He will take you through this valley. That trial will expire and he will bring you like he did with Joseph and like mm -hmm. he has done all through the book of Genesis. Yes. He will bring his goodness, his righteousness to pass. Well, we're finished with lesson number 11, Joseph, Master of Dreams. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be go going into lesson number 12, Joseph, Prince of Egypt. Again, the mm -hmm. last sections, the last lessons are all about Joseph. So we want to invite you to join us as we continue and finish up our study in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Thank you.